Hey guys, today we are going to talk about a card that was recently bulk. I know this card was recently bulk because when I picked up the bulk in the flea market, I actually had a few copies of this card in a past video, and now it is a $16 card. It previously was a $17 card, but has since dropped a tiny bit in price. Uh, definitely a card to keep your eyes out if you're like me and you're hitting up a flea market or you're hitting up a card store or this card in my opinion isn't worth the $16 but it should be worth $10 its price is going to hold a lot better than if contagion energy engines price can hold relatively well this price will hold even better because this is a much older set this is exodus exodus is such an old set that you're not really scared that people are going to have this in their trade binders and be like, oh, well, you know, I've always had this, now I can get rid of it. That's not the type of card this is. The supply of it is so uncommon or so mythic, okay? Let's say it's mythic that it's just not going to, people are not going to be able to restock this card that quickly. I'm, look, I'm looking at Contagion Engine right now, and it's a very interesting graph, but this one should be even better than Contagion Engine as in terms of holding its value pre-spike. Now it will drop, but it should hold its value relatively well. So Spike Weaver, what deck is it being played with in Atraxa? So Atraxa is one of five, four, one of five commanders, right? That are, is seeing a lot of play. She has spiked the price of a ton of cards namely those with plus one plus one tokens proliferate anything like that the card prices have just gone skyrocket and it has outperformed legacy it has outperformed modern it's outperformed standard definitely by a long shot and even the frontier format so these cards that are spiking there's true demand because it's actual casual players which the majority of magic players are casual players who will never go to friday night magic who might go to the local store to buy booster packs, but largely they probably buy packs from Walmart or Target or somewhere like that. This is an insanely good card for that deck, and people want to make the deck. So it is actual demand. Now let's go and let's talk about bulk a little bit. I want to kind of diverge because in a past video, I actually picked up a lot of these in my bulk. So if you look at my binder, like you'll see like New Frontier, which has since spiked. When you buy bulk, and it's, you know, even if people look for the bulk, these prices, like this was a $1 or $2 card until recently, and even then, it was, what, a $4 card? Really hard to get rid of $4 cards. Really hard to get rid of $2 and $1 cards. If you take a $1 card to a local game store, they probably will give you $0.10 cents cash, or maybe $0.20 cents in trade if you're very lucky. So what happens is these cards end up in bulk, and even the $1 or the $4 card, let's say a $4 card, at most that store is going to give you a dollar and that just feels bad. You can just sell it as a bulk collection. And that's what has happened to me is I bought all these bulk cards from recently from flea markets and things of that nature. Flea markets from friends who are quitting the game. And you have just randomly this dude. Like you have a playset of this guy and you're just like, oh. Cool, it's gone up in price. The same with New Frontier, the same with Contingent Engine. I have lots of those. It's just mind boggling how Magic Finance works, where if you just hold it long enough, there is a chance that that card or that one card can pay for your whole bulk purchase. And then you're just looking at upside, right? Anyways, bye guys.